What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Network Chuck. Uh, yesterday, I went and took the DevNet Associate exam, and uh, today I'm going to talk about what the junk that is, uh, how did I pass it, <laughs> and um, uh, should you take it? Should you go for it? That's kind of a, a big deal, right? Because it's a new exam, um, new stuff, totally new to the industry. Ah, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> um, uh, so first of all, this video is sponsored by you. If you are a member of Network Chuck, uh, we got like 193 members now. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, anyways, let's get right into it. So here's what I'm covering. So I'm covering what I used to pass the DevNet Associate. Um, I'm covering what was it like, and then I. Uh, I'm going to tell you, do I recommend it? Should you get it? And then at the very end of this, I'll be announcing the winners of the Unify giveaway that I uh, did last week. So I'm giving away three dream machines. So uh, stick around for that. Uh, can you guys hear me? Let me know real quick. And I'm going to sip some coffee right now. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> so anyways, what did I use to pass the DevNet Associate? Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. And um, I, it's kind of weird saying this. I fully ex expected to fail. I even like was public about it. Like, I'm okay, tomorrow I'm taking the exam. I'm going to fail it. Um, I, on my stories as I was driving to the testing center, I'm like, I'm going to fail this exam. I'm not ready. And um, why did I say that? Well, I didn't study. I didn't. <laughs> I, um, I think I, I probably studied for probably two hours total the weekend before. Um, and then um, that morning, I was refreshing some things, looking at CBT Nuggets and stuff, uh, the DevNet course, but I didn't study. Um, but I'll tell you what did prepare me. So obviously I couldn't just go into this. Like, I'm not saying, oh, the DevNet associate was chump change, super easy, not even worth like, no, it was it was hard. Like one of the harder exams I've taken, um, partly because it was just very, very new material. I, you know, I don't live and breathe this kind of stuff. Uh, but I'll tell you what made me prepared. Uh, first was uh, dealing with DevNet for a while now. So uh, DevNet's been around for a bit before the associate exam has come out, right? Uh, so they had, they've had developer.cisco.com up there. I've been to a couple Cisco Lives. They've had the DevNet zone there. So th being around that, I've kind of, I think through osmosis, absorbed the information. Like if you if you stick around Hank Preston enough, you might just somehow get some information. Uh, but that's not it either. Uh, the other part of it was when I was preparing for the um, the CCNA, the new CCNA we just put out at CBT Nuggets, um, my portion was the network automation portion. And while I had dabbled in network automation, a lot of it was new for me. So going through the process of learning that, preparing the material and putting it out there, I have to tell you, oh my goodness, it prepared me for this exam. So I'm, I'm going to say this. If you're looking at getting started for the DevNet Associate, if you're looking for a place to start, um, start with the CCNA. I'm dead serious because uh, my network automation portion, I did. Um, I haven't taken the new CCNA. Um, so what I did may have been completely overkill on the, on the course, but on that course, I covered the bulk of what you'll see. Not only I'm being generous, not the bulk, but I, I cover such a good portion of what you need to get started to learn DevNet stuff. Um, and then beyond that, I relied heavily on looking at the CBT Nuggets course, um, the DevNet course from Knox and uh, Ben Finkel and Keith. Um, less on Keith's side because Keith taught the networking portion, which I aced, of course, because I, you know, I know networking. However, the um, the stuff I was really, really surprised about, I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know this, is not just knowing how to write a Python script, not just knowing um, a little bit of Linux. It's knowing how to make it work well. And that, that's that's the the difference. You have to know the the uh, the uh, the des good designs, uh, good code designs, and um, that was something completely f foreign to me. Had no idea what was going on. Um, so uh, I, I can tell you this: the, the things that I hit really hard that I knew I was very very rusty on was I hit Git. I don't use Git. Um, Git is how you um, uh, manage your code, how you uh, how you kind of check it in, check it out, uh, manage revisions, and it keeps it nice and tidy. Uh, multiple teams working together. I didn't know that very well, and it's a command line uh, resource. You're doing all this kind of thing. So I th this was a foreign thing to me. So I had to learn that really quickly. I crammed that. Um, but there's other stuff that through the process of talking about, I, I've been telling you guys this for a long time, learn Python, learn Linux, uh, learn the cloud. Those three things were on there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm um, clearly Cisco screaming at us, learn these things. Um, so real quick, I'm going to uh, show you, uh, I'll just, I can just move this stuff out of the way. 
not my coffee. I'm going to keep this with me. I'm going to draw my magic board here. I'm going to switch uh, to the screen. Cool. I think we're good. I'm going to take a sip of coffee real quick and get set up. So I'm going to show you um, what I was hit with, and I'll kind of go with the exam. Um, because I, I, a lot of people are wondering, like, what's the exam like? Are you coding? Are there labs? What's going on? What's this craziness? I'll, I'll cover this right now. Right, let me get my pen up. Where's my pen? Okay, cool. I got it. Um, so, by the way, the, the new Cisco DevNet or learning sites are really cool. I was really surprised by this. Um, anyways, I'll, I'll kind of do a flash a flash flyby of what I saw on the exam. Um, so just from this, you need to know. Oh, that's way too big. What's going on? Okay, there we go. Uh, no, it didn't fix itself. Okay, let's try this once more. You need to know XML, JSON, and YAML like well. And I covered that in my CCNA course. So like that's, you need to know that. Um, uh, also learning how to uh, parse the information with Python. Uh, that's important. Um, that's not covered in the CCNA information. So you'll need to know that. That's not, I don't think it's covered in, um, well, no, I think it'll be covered in Encore, uh, but that's stuff you have to know in practice. Um, this, describe the concept of test-driven development. Uh, de describe um, agile, lean, waterfall. All this stuff is like totally foreign to me. So I had to quickly like, what does that mean? What does waterfall mean? What does agile mean? So I had to look that up. Um, organizing your code into methods, functions, classes, modules. You have to learn all that stuff. And uh, and I got hit with questions on MVC, observers, um, and then version control, and then Git. Um, I got hit with some questions on Git. Um, and I, I had got it. I had to get it. <laughs> so that was horrible. Um, so all of that was on. Like, I have to say, uh, as far as testing on the new exciting stuff, did a great job. I mean, I fully expected when I hit that next and end exam button, I'm like, well, that was a good try. That was a fun exam. Um, but I, I can't wait to see you again because I will. I can't believe I passed. Like, I, it was a difficult exam. Um, so software development and design, like that was hit pretty stinking heavy. Um, APIs, this is probably my weakest area actually, and I did not expect this to be my weakest area. Um, but you have to know how to construct um, a request, an API call using Python. <coughs> Listen my voice. Um, not just using it in Postman, you gotta know how to do it in a script. So you have to be familiar with that. And what I saw on the exam, I'm not gonna give too much away without getting myself in trouble from the, the Cisco overlords, but essentially you're seeing um, they would put code up there and you'd have to fill in the blanks. So essentially they'd have an, an API request or an API, uh, API like a post uh, a message or something. You'd have to fill in the missing things. Um, and, and it would be like for certain APIs, like the, the Meraki API, or it might be the um, collaboration API, uh, the DNA center API. So you'd, ha you'd have to pretty much know what's going on. Um, um, API security, knowing, uh, knowing tokens and, uh, and how to get your tokens and what it looks like and what might be missing if you if you uh, encounter that information that was hit. Um, I hope I'm not giving too much away. If I am, it's to your benefit and to my detriment. Um, Cisco platforms. Now this this is where um, this is where it's kind of a thing where you're going to have to find a good course to uh, prepare yourself for this. Taking a quick swig. And by the way, I'll, I'll answer questions after all this. I just want to get through all this information. Um, I, I have the benefit of having worked uh, with um, a lot of Cisco products from the fire uh, from the firewall perspective. You know, uh, Firepower, um, AMP, which is AMP for endpoints, uh, malware detection. I've worked with collaboration stuff, um, data center stuff. So I, I've worked with that in production in real life. So moving on to looking at uh, how an API might interact with, uh, or how, how we might interact with an API for that system. Um, I was able to kind of, without having studied a ton and even dealt with the APIs, I could kind of gather where like, for example, how would you get a list of devices or get the list of phones from CUCM? Like I could kind of gather that. So if you've worked with this stuff before, um, you can kind of figure it out. And, and that's, that's, by the way, that's a mark of a good API. It has to make sense. It, it, if you think, okay, if I wanted to pull a list of phones from uh, CUCM, it would have to like follow, you know, device, phones, and then it might look it up by map. Like, it would have to be um, consistent, structured, and you, you'll find this out when I in my CCNA course and uh, as you go through the DevNet course as well. Um, so knowing those Cisco products is definitely key. And if you don't know those, and if you haven't played with those, the beautiful part about this is, is that... Uh, you can go to the DevNet sandbox and play with it all, which DevNet is not just an exam. It's a whole community. It's a whole website that gives you free resources to play around with stuff that cost millions of dollars. Not even kidding. And um, 
And that's also part of the exam is knowing about DevNet and what it offers and knowing that sandbox. So I just helped you with the exam. Like that was, I'm not gonna tell you, <laughs> but that will help you with the exam. Um, application deployment, <laughs> deployment and security, clear that out. So this is interesting because you have to, this, this actually, I was not ready for this. Um, of course, knowing about virtual machines. I mean, come on, that's, if, if you're in IT, you gotta know about virtual machines. So knowing that information, um, knowing um, uh, edge computing, uh, cloud computing, come on, I got this guy. So that was easy. But then hitting with like CI CD stuff and then like Python unit test, I learned <laughs> I learned Python unit test like five minutes before I walked into that exam. I was like, okay, what, what's a unit test again? I gotta look this up. Um, it didn't help much. Uh, <laughs> uh, Docker file. Now I've dealt with Docker. I've deployed Docker containers. I've built Docker, but I don't know it well enough to be tested on it. So like that, that threw me for a loop. I don't know if I did well on the Docker questions I received, but Docker was hit. So Docker definitely much, uh, definitely very much a thing. Um, uh, and it was funny, like DNS, load balancers, firewalls and all that. If you're studying for the CCNA um, or if you're in IT, that, that, that's a snoozer. You'll be able to get that pretty easy. And then OWASP, just basic security. Um, if you've gone through any kind of security plus, or if you've gone through any Cisco security things, you'll be able to get that. Bash, Bash was there, man. It was heavy. To, well, I mean, not like heavy, heavy, but like you have to have used Linux before. You have to have uh, done some things in it. So Linux is key to getting the DevNet associate, and obviously it's key to moving on to the new stuff and uh, network automation. I mean, it's it's cr it was. Cr I tell you this. I was excited because all the studying I've been doing, um, not for DevNet specifically, but just getting ready for network automation, for um, playing with Linux, playing with Python, all that stuff helped me do well on this exam. So if you've been doing that stuff, like you're, you're probably halfway there. Um, so that was super cool. Now I, I will mention this. I know a lot of the DevNet courses out there that you can find. Um, they don't have Python specific courses in that. Like they don't, they, they expect you to already come to the table knowing a bit of Python. So you'll need to learn Python on your own dime, your own time. Um, CBT August has Python courses, so you can do that. Ben does a great job with that, Mr. Finkel. Um, and there's other resources, but yeah, you, you do need to dive deep into Python and get this down because that's what DevNet has chosen. It's what the network automation community at large has chosen as the language of choice. <laughs> um, as far as infrastructure and automation, let's see, what was I hit with here? Um, model driven. Yep. Yang, yang, yang. Um, you have to know what viral is. Um, I didn't really get much on Piats, uh, but viral very much. You have to know what, know what viral does. And that's as network people, we, we are pretty familiar with that. Um, Ansible was actually Ansible puppet and chef. Now the CCNA portion of what I put on there, um, I don't believe the CCNA expects you to know too much about Ansible Puppet and Chef. Uh, these are network automation tools and um, they're, they're also system automation tools, data center automation tools. And uh, the CCNA just expects you to know what it is and what the components are. I had showed you on the CCNA what it looks like, um, what an Ansible playbook might look like and that, that will lend, that will, that will be good for you on the DevNet Associate. Uh, let's see, what else, what else? RestConf, NetConf, that'll hit you. Yang. Um, I did not know what this was. The unified diff. I didn't know what that was. Um, I still don't. <laughs> uh, and then uh, API calls. I mean, the API calls were huge. Like, such a large part of the exam. And then, of course, network fundamentals. I mean, come on. All day, every day, I could do this. Uh, definitely my highest area I scored on. Um, that was more like a, it was a nice break whenever I'd be going through the hard questions, like, oh, bam, bam, hit me, hit me, left and right. And then all of a sudden, what's a firewall? I'm like, oh, okay, this, I'm feeling good about this. <laughs> so I, I know I got that right, at least. Um, so anyways, that was kind of what um, what the exam was like. Um, there were no there were no labs per se, uh, no like sims like you would see on the CCNA or um, CCMP. Um, not like I saw Knox's live stream where he talked about there was like barely any trivia, like tricky questions. Yeah, there there weren't very many. I, I was surprised by that, but it was it was a good exam. It was 102 questions, 102 questions for me. So that that was a, a lot of stuff to go through, but it was fun. It was really fun. Um. So anyways, now for um. I hope I gave you a good picture of what it was like, um, what you need to get, uh, do to get prepared for it. Uh, I'll kind of recover or uh, go over that one more time here. Python, learn Python, learn Linux, and then um, definitely go through the DevNet Associate at CBT Nuggets because uh, you, you got to know how the collaboration APIs work, the the uh, security like ICE and uh, AMP, Firepower, um, data center stuff. Like you, you got to know all that. 
uh, not to the like you don't have to become like a CCMP data center or a CCMP collaboration. You don't have to do that. You just have to know how to interact with the APIs, what they might offer. You have to know how to read in a uh, read API documentation, which I do cover on the CCNA stuff. So if you look at an API, I'll have a document documented list of how to how to interact with it. Knowing how to do that will be great. And um, so uh, let me get to this question. <sighs> People aren't going to like me when I say this. So should you go for the DevNet Associate? Um, I'm going to come at this from two angles. Uh, <laughs> one, uh, from the angle of wanting to get the knowledge of network automation and uh, wanting to demonstrate those skills and, uh, yeah, I guess demonstrating to your peers and people around you and, and your current coworkers that you know network automation and kind of future-proofing yourself, then yes, go for it. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's a great validator for our skills because I, I, I felt validated. Uh, I've been working on this stuff kind of randomly and developing all these skills. And I'm not sure if I was well-rounded or not. And this exam told me I was doing pretty good. So that, that was a good feeling. So if you, if you want to take the exam to see, hey, am I, am, I, um, am I up to snuff for the DevNet folks? Can I walk into the DevNet zone at uh, Cisco Live and go, I belong here. Uh, I think it's good for that. <laughs> I want to take a sip of water here. Now, um, and also I think, um, I guess I can say this. If you are uh, getting your CCNA um, and you finish your CCNA, I think you should definitely go ahead and try to get the uh, DevNet Associate. Um, if, it's, if it's within the, your, your plan and you have the money to do so, I would say go for it. Because I think going through the CCNA, uh, both with all the new all the new topics on the CCNA, uh, network automation, security, wireless, all that stuff combined, um, I think you'll be really, really, like, you'll have a, a heads up, uh, um, uh, a huge advantage going to the DevNet Associate. Seriously. You, you won't have to study a ton to get that. Uh, you'll definitely want to do your due diligence and, and, and go through the course, but you'll be well off. Um now, time, time for the other side of this, of uh, maybe why I don't think you should get it. Um, <laughs> and I'll show you this. Let me make sure my screen can be uh, shown here. Uh, where is it? Ah, ah. Make sure I close the browsers I don't want you to see. Where'd it go? Okay, here we go. And I think this it's this right here. Yeah, cool, cool. So, um, I uh, here, here's my problem. Let me get back to me. Um, all the, uh, every certification, its value is only tied to the fact that people want you to have it. That's it. Um, CCNA is valuable because you know why? There are a ton of jobs out there that are saying, hey, we want you to have the CCNA. If you have it, you're, you have a pretty good chance of getting a job here. Um, if people don't want you to have it or if people don't know about it, it's not going to be very valuable to you, is it? Um, the certifications are valuable at, at validating your skills, but um, if, if people don't know what that certification is, they're not going to know what the skills that you're trying to validate are. So I, I show Indeed up here. Um, and, and again, I'm, I'm being harsh because um, I have to be. Right now, if I search for DevNet Associate in Dallas, Texas, which is a tech hub, uh, there's nothing for DevNet Associate in Dallas, Texas. If I go to DICE, there's nothing for DevNet Associate and DICE in Dallas, Texas, or Monster, um, just a bunch of ads. It, it's just kind of confusing. There's, there's no matching criteria. So right now, at the, the, the current time, the DevNet Associate, no one cares about that yet. No one. Will people care about it? Possibly. Um, and I think if anyone can make a certification, a brand new one, so new to the industry, and uh, make it work and make it popular, I think Cisco can do it. Uh, but do you remember the uh, the GNS3 associate? Y'all remember that? <laughs> Maybe not. You may have not even heard about it. Uh, but this one was actually very similar to the DevNet associate. Um, it actually tested you on many of the things uh, the, the exam covers, but GNS3 didn't have the uh, the certification shops that Cisco has, and no one cares about it, right? No one cares. No one cares. It's not valuable at all, and I think it's kind of just died off. Uh, I don't think the DevNet Associate's going to die off, so don't don't don't, don't run with this. But I think at this current moment in time, if you're thinking, "What's my next step? What's going to help me in my career?" I don't think it's going to be DevNet right now because no one knows what it is. So like, for example, if you were like, I wanna excel in my job, I wanna become the best ever, I wanna make a ton of money, or I want, you know, I want a XYZ goal, and um, 
DevNet is part of your goal. You're like, I'm gonna get the DevNet associate, I'm gonna show them I'm ready. So you get that DevNet associate, you go to your boss, you're like, boss, man, I've been working hard, I deserve a raise, I deserve a bump, I deserve a promotion because I got the DevNet associate. And he goes, what's that? <laughs> you know, that's going to happen for a while. HR isn't looking for DevNet associate, jobs aren't looking for DevNet associate right now. In fact, it's really hard to even find a job for network automation. So it's one of those things where it's it's gonna be a niche thing, like maybe uh, some Cisco partners or, um, or whatever are gonna hire some DevNet associates, beginner level uh, network automation engineers to come on board. And maybe Cisco is going to have requirements for their partners to have a certain amount of DevNet, DevNet associate and DevNet professional um, certified folks to be able to sell their DNA center stuff. That might be the case and that's where it becomes more and more valuable. And then all of a sudden we have that trickle down effect where people are needing to hire network automation folks. So like, how do we validate network automation skills? Why is my phone ringing? How do we validate network automation skills? Oh, we do that by looking at the DevNet associate. So that I think that that will definitely eventually happen. How long? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't think there's been that like this big of a change in the certification realm in a long time, or maybe ever. So it's it's a big question mark for me. I, I have no idea. So I can't tell you go get the DevNet associate because it'll be totally worth your money and your time. I can't tell you that right now. Um, I can tell you the, the information you'll learn and, and the knowledge you'll gain is totally, completely val uh, valuable and pertinent to what you'll do now as a network engineer. Um, but I can't tell you that spending the money and the time to get that certification will help you get a job or help you further your career at this moment in time. Um, however, for me, it's definitely valuable because I can say, I know this stuff and I can demonstrate to everyone I'm talking to, like you guys on YouTube, I can say, hey, I know DevNet. So for me, it's valuable because I can, I can demonstrate that to you because obviously you guys know what it is. <laughs> Anyways. That's my two cents. Let me know if you have a different thought about that. Um, I realize it might be uh, co controversial. Like I, and I, I love the DevNet folks. I love what they're doing. I love all the things they've done, and I think this will continue. Um, that's just my two cents. I got to give you guys my honest opinion, my honest feedback, and what, and I, I want to set you up for success. Now, if it's the case where you've you got your CCNA, you got your CCMP uh, enterprise, and you're like, I need to like do something else. Um, I'm I'm interested in DevNet associate. Dude, go for it. Like you can pick it up pretty like if you, especially if you've got the uh the encore uh blah 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 the ccmp enterprise you'll, you'll be pretty well off to go for that exam um so yeah <laughs> so that my my overall my overall take on the devnet associate great exam and it, it definitely tests us on things that um network engineers need to start learning right now things like python linux um apis apis are huge you gotta know your crud man Create, read, update, delete. Um, cloud, Docker, uh, did I say Linux? Linux, <laughs> Git, uh, and, and just, oh, man, all this stuff is moving that, like all of us are moving that direction. And you don't have to learn everything to be a software developer, but you have to learn enough to, to, to get up to that, to that point. So I can say, um, all right, Dimitri asked me, the, the guy who challenged me to do this, and thanks again, Dimitri, for challenging me to do this. I never would have done it. Um, he challenged me to take this exam, and, and I told him in my live stream, I'm like, I don't think this is for network engineers. I think this exam is for software developers coming into the network engineering uh, 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 realm. Um, I, I take that back a bit. I think the exam is definitely for network engineers. Now, it, it does feel a little weird when I'm getting simple firewall questions when I'm like, I've, I'm a network engineer. I, I already know that this is super easy. So it felt like out of place, um, but it definitely felt more geared, toward, geared towards people like me and you um, getting ready for that network automation piece. So again, that, that's that's my overall take. now before I answer questions. And, I, and I'll look at all the super chats here in a bit. Thanks everyone, by the way. Whew, I need some coffee. Uh, I wanna pick the winners for my Unified giveaway real quick. Uh, the first one I'm going to, let me switch to my screen here real quick. Hey, look. Um, so I'm gonna do a, a random pick for the first prize. Now the first prize, I, I think I put it in here. Uh, prize number one was a Unified Dream Machine. And um, yeah, that's a pretty sick device. So it was a comment below with Dream Machine, hashtag Dream Machine, and I'll randomly pick one comment. So I'll do that right now um, using this random comment picker here. Pasting that in there. Uh, Got to filter it by hashtag Dream Machine. And uh, this is it, guys. Um, did I spell it right? Cool. So it's going to collect the comments. Got a ton of comments. Um, thank you for everyone who entered. I keep looking at the camera like you can see me. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to pick one winner here. We go dream machine. This is prize number one. Go. All right, John Collings. 
<laughs> want Dream Machine. So I'm going to snapshot that just so I don't accidentally lose this. Um, and then, awesome, congrats. I, I need to put a button on this thing. So uh, congrats to John Collins for winning that first Dream Machine prize. Now, the other ones were pretty uh, pretty huge, so I wanted to do a, a proper uh, proper giveaway on it. So let me pull it out on my screen. Uh, the second one was a Unified Dream Machine plus UAP Beacon HD, which is basically a, a Dream Machine plus a Unify access point. And the grand prize is utterly ridiculous, ubiquity. Um, God, I don't know why they gave me so much. Uh, Dream Machine, Cloud Key, PoE Switch, G3 Flex Cameras, um, the two of those, uh, Nano HD, Flex HD, all, all three of those are access points. So it's just, it's, it's insane. It's stupid. Um, so anyways, I'm going to pull up the uh, contest right now. I'm going to switch to my live screen so I don't give away too much personal information. But I'm going to pick those winners right now. Uh, let's see. Finished competition. And uh, we'll do the Unified Dream Machine plus UAP Beacon first. I'll go choose my winner. Draw the winner. Drawing it now out of 1,200 people. And uh, I will announce the winner on the main contest page. And I'll throw it up here real quick. Congrats to Roger TXD, uh, entry number 5,276. You won the Unified Dream Machine plus the UAP Beacon. Uh, Unify will be in contact with you soon on that. So now time for the grand prize. This one's pretty stinking big. Um, Whew, I'm excited for you guys. Uh, almost jealous. Uh, let's see. Where's the contest at? Here we go. Dream Machine bundle. I'm going to draw my winner here. Drawing now. Man. And no, it wasn't U.S. citizens only. It could be anybody. Uh, all right. The winner. I have the winner. I'm going to announce the winner on the contest page. I'm going to jump over to the contest page. And I'm going to show you who the winner is right now. And the winner is Shane R, uh, whoever you are. <laughs> uh, you'll know who you are if you uh, put that in. I got, that's all the winners, guys. Three, uh, three winners for the competition. Uh, thank you for entering and watching that video. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you to Ubiquity for doing that awesome giveaway. Um, I got a secret box from them uh, last week, which I'll be going through that here in a moment. Uh, so yeah, that was the winner. Um, I did want to cover real quick. I wanted to congratulate everyone for uh, Surpocalypse. I mean, Surpocalypse is over. Can you believe that? Like, I remember making the beginning videos. I think it was our community who actually coined the phrase Surpocalypse. Like, we had a live stream. Like, oh, what should we call this thing? Surpocalypse. That's what we came up with. So, um, I think I think we are we are the Surpocalypse people, right? I want to congratulate everyone who uh, went through Surpocalypse and got their certifications before the cutoff. Um, I think it was so cool to for everyone to just to get ready and hunker down and, and just go for it. And it was so encouraging to see everyone, especially on, like on Friday, uh, some of the last testing days. People were like, I passed, I passed, I passed, I passed. And on on, uh, on Sunday, people were like, I passed, I passed. It was so cool to see that. Um, so congrats to you guys. Like that, that was not easy, uh, having that much pressure. So congrats to all of you. Uh, but then, you know, a lot of you didn't pass. Um, a lot of you didn't even try. Me. <laughs> I mean, I definitely tried, but I was going to get my route and switch done. I didn't do it. Uh, so shame on me. But you know what? My message to me and my message to all of you is that it's, an, it's a new new era. I don't know. What should we call the new era, the new dawn? I've heard people say, well, it's, it's been sort of apocalypse, so we got to call it like the new era, like Genesis. There's like, I, I don't know, so, something brand new, like something fresh, like Walking Dead type uh, uh, reborn stuff. I don't know. Let me know. Uh, but we have a fresh start now. We have all uh, this buffet of new Cisco certifications. And I, that's why I wanted to take a certification test the first day because I wanted to start this great. I wanted to start off on the right foot. I wanted to win. And um, thankfully I did. And I, so many of you have. Like, congrats on all the new certifications. So many people have gotten the DevNet Associate exam uh, cert. It's been so cool. So congrats to all of you. It's It's been crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, and yeah, my, my next target, in case you're wondering, I'm going to get the Encore. So all I need to do to get my CCMP uh, is pass the Encore exam because I already have the uh, T-shoot under my belt and the T-shoot converted to some random special, specialist uh, certification. So all i got to do is pair that with the Encore and I've got it. So uh, whatever flavor of, uh, <laughs> of that I'm going to be, um, that's cool. Anyways, I'll go through some questions real quick. Um, 
I would love to hear what you guys think. I'll look at the comments uh, later about the DevNet associate. A lot of comments. All right, so a uh, super chat from Nelson Custodio. Thank you so much for the super chat, dude. Way too much. Um, so congrats. Thanks for all the content. Uh, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Um, tell you what, like you guys really helped me go through the DevNet associate exam. Like that was that was rough and I was nervous about it. So you guys helped out a lot. Uh, Network Guy TV, uh, super chat. Thank you, sir. Uh, you motivated me to continue on my quest to get the CCMP Enterprise Core by the summer and advanced routing by the fall. Do you get the CCNA if you pass CCMP? Congrats on getting the DevNet, sir. Thank you. Um, no, I don't believe you will get the CCNA if you pass the CCMP. Uh, it's not one of those things where you get, like, you get the top most certain, you get all of them below. No, I don't believe that happens, but uh, I do find it interesting that you're going to be skipping the CCNA if that's the case. I um, Unless you're like, you have some serious experience in the industry, I would say don't do that. You definitely want to go for the CCNA, especially with the, the huge gap we have now between CCNA and MP. So I, I would definitely um, look at NA. And um, yeah, Encore is going to be fun. I'm excited about that exam. I can't wait to take it. And then uh, the NRC, the advanced routing. So you have, you have a good timeline. So um, good luck on that network guy TV. And thanks again for the super chat. Uh, let's see who else. Um, Dominic, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, going for my network plus on Thursday. Whew, good luck. Uh, I've been worried about not knowing enough to pass a second time. Didn't finish and had 15 questions left, but made 600. Anyway, will passing net plus help me pass CCNA exam? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it won't be enough to pass a CCNA exam, but it'll definitely have you come in being like, okay, I, I know what a network is. Um, you should know subnetting, you should know what firewalls are and, and wireless and security. So I think once you get to go from network plus to CCNA, it's just gonna be um, more applying the, the general theory of what it is to more specific vendor specific stuff. So learning how to work, learning how to make a network on a Cisco router, learning how to uh, produce VLANs on a Cisco switch, uh, which I think it'd be really fun for you. Honestly, crazy fun because that's what I found is so frustrating with those um, those certifications that are not really vendor specific is they're kind of airy. They're, they don't they don't get you down in the weeds with the command line and, and doing stuff. It's frustrating. So I think you'll you'll definitely love going to the CCNA and. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's rough with a tight timeline on a, on a test, dealing with uh, like, oh crap, I ran out of time, I have 15 questions left, but you, you made a pretty good score. I don't know what the passing is, but I think 600 is pretty high for not having finished 15 questions. So next time, yeah, just manage that time, take your, uh, I think, you know, a part of part of what allowed me to do so well in the DevNet Associate exam, uh, and when I say so well, I mean, I passed, uh, was the fact that I had no expectations of pa of, of uh, passing it. So like I walked in, I'm like, whatever happens, happens. I was totally chill, even even keeled. I was like, whatever. I'm just gonna see if I know it. And I'm gonna. I was determined to have a good time and just see what it was like and experience it. And I think that that made a difference for me. I, I've I've definitely come up to exams where I was like, oh, I'm so, I, I I've got to pass this. I've been studying for six months. I've got to do this. This is attempt number two. I'm stressed out not very good. And I end up like spending way too much time on a question because I'm like hyper analyzing it. So I think trying to get your mind right as you sit down at that little weird cubicle and the crappy CRT computer looking thing. Um, and the people coughing next to you, gosh, I swear the guy next to me had Corona or something. It was <laughs> it's making me nervous. Uh, but yeah, you just have to get yourself in the right mindset and be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm here. Um, I just have to Go through it and relax because stressing out is not going to do anything for me. It's going to make it worse. Easier said than done, uh, but that's what I would do. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you, Elias, for the super sicker, which I believe that's a thing now. So thank you for that. That's uh, <laughs> a celebratory pair, I think. Okay. <laughs> um, if you have a question, let me know. I'll try to find it. Oh, you said... Um, Oh, this can test my Spanish. Usted es una inspiración. So I am inspirational. Is that is that correct? I took uh, two years in Spanish in high school. <laughs> so I hope I got that right. I'm more uh, studying French right now. Why are people putting hashtag dream machine on my comments? You know, I put a contest out last week. Uh, let's see. All right. So, oh, got more super chats at the bottom here. Uh, Manuari Diaz. Uh, thank you for the super chat. He says, uh, will you be working on the new CCMP collab material? Um, mm, I don't know. Um, so I, uh, I actually miss collab a lot. I, I miss it a lot. Like it's, it's kind of my heart. Uh, I, I posted last week on my Instagram and Twitter that I set up my CUCM 
uh, stuff again and, and powered up my phone. So I, I do miss it. Uh, however, it's just not, not a lot of people go for it anymore. It's, it's, it's like when I make the, when I, like I, it takes a lot of work to produce an exam or a, a course for that exam. It's, it's a lot of stuff to cover. It's a lot of work. And while I enjoy it, I know people who watch it will value it. It's like five people watching it, man. <laughs> it's not a very popular exam. So, um, for me, like as far as like where my time is spent, I have to really focus on that now. So probably not CCMP collab in the immediate future, but who knows? Who knows? Um, I do miss it though. Uh, my heart out to you. Uh, it, learning a CCMP collab is definitely valuable for you if you're in the field. Seriously, like if you're not doing what I'm doing, if you don't teach and make YouTube videos, learning collaboration will make you a ton of money and you'll have a great time doing it. But uh, again, it's one of those skills that not, not a lot of people go after. So it's rare, it makes you valuable. And um, I would highly encourage anyone to go after that. Who it's so valuable. Uh, <laughs> Robert Russell says, uh, <laughs> thank you for the super chat. Just tell T Potts to study uh, his CCNA. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, so T Potts, whoever you are, get your butt up and go study for your CCNA right now. Uh, set a timeline. You're going to get it in, uh, let's say, six months. You're going to get it. So do it now. Um, schedule that exam and uh, go watch me, Jeremy, and Keith talk your face off about routing, OSPF, automation. Do it right now. <laughs> hope that hope that helps. Um, uh, William Gildersleeve, thank you for the uh, super chat. Thoughts on EJPT? I don't know what that is. Um, I'm going to Google it. Actually, as I'm, as I'm typing in Google, I forgot what it was. EJPT. What is that? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, E-learns. Google is your answer for everything. Um, E-learn security junior penetration tester. Um, I have zero thoughts on it right now, actually. Um, interesting. So it's kind of like the C scent of uh, penetration testing, right? Like the beginner level cert. I have zero thoughts on it because I don't know anything about it. Let me uh, jump in there real quick. Uh, I, sh I guess I should like share my screen or put it up on this thing. Let me uh, go to this. Let's all look at it together because I've never seen this. So it's from the eLearn e -learn people, which I've heard some things about. Um, I Again, it's one of those things where I don't know if the industry values it just yet. Let's see. So definitely junior level cert, 100% practical certification. That's fun. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, no multiple choice questions. It's all scenario based, real world scenario. Shoot, it looks fun. Look at the cover. TCP IP routing. Oh, so you, you know these are things you have to already kind of know. Um, oh no, these are these are things you have to learn. So made exploit, a uh, vulnerability assessment. So it actually looks pretty solid. My goodness. Huh. I'll have to look into that. So I guess the question is, do this or um, I guess more of an admin level certification. So I guess, gosh, all these things I'm not familiar with. Yeah, I don't know any of these things. Where's the associate level? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, so I'll have to look into that. Uh, if somebody in the comments or someone who watches later knows more about it than I do, which will probably be anyone at this point, uh, let me know. Or let uh, our friend know here. Let me pull up my stuff again. Oh, I put it over here. And thanks again for the super chat. Uh, I know I couldn't be a lot of help with that. Uh, let's see, Brandon Fisher. Thank you for the super chat. Post cert apocalypse trending now. Post cert apocalypse. I kind of like that. Post cert apocalypse. Although it, it is lacking that um, that new generation Genesis kind of vibe and feel. I I guess we'll we'll play with it. We should do a vote or something. Uh, Jack Blast says he failed his CCNA on Friday. Uh, and the old TCNA. So that that sucks. I feel you, dude. But you know what? That test is dead. You can say, screw you test, you died, you couldn't handle it. So you got a new test to look at and um, you'll, you'll get the new one. Don't worry. You'll, you'll, you're already so prepared for the old stuff and there's so much overlap with the new stuff that all you got to do is pick up a little bit of security wireless and of course, spend some time with me on the network automation. You'll be golden, dude. Don't worry about it. You got this. Uh, thank you for the super chat from uh, Master Monkey Ma. <laughs> uh, don't you think six months is a little long to study for CCNA? Yeah, it is. Um, but I'm, I'm factoring in the fact that uh, maybe, maybe you have a lot going on. Uh, so for example, I have a lot going on and I often, as you guys know, commit myself to too much and I get overwhelmed. So I think six months is good if you have a full-time job, family or, and or going to school and you need to pace yourself. 
and you really want to absorb the information. The new CCNA is not, um, it's not light on the information. Like it's heavy. It's huge. Um, the course of CBT nuggets, we have like a ton of videos for it. Um, so without having taken the, like, I, I'm going to take the new CCNA. So I'll be able to do a full report on, whoa, what's this thing like? I know David Baum will put out a video on it as well. Uh, but man, six months, it's hard to say right now. Hard to say right now. I think three months is still a good timeline, but it's all about how much time you got. And everybody's different, man. Like, don't, don't be like, okay, I've got to be like George over here because George did it in two weeks and I have to study my butt off because I, I can't let George beat me. No, 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 no. Really, there's no race here. There's no race. You just learn it well, enjoy it, fall in love with it. Like you win every time. When you go through the material and you learn it well and you enjoy it and you fall in love with it, you always win. You Every time you win, there's no race. Um, so that's why I, I'm kind of, I'm really against now people rushing through it because you miss, you miss things. You miss the, you forget to enjoy it. You forget to have fun with it. And uh, it becomes a stressful experience when it should be, should be a fun experience. Um, now given like, I'm, I'm sure the, for anybody, the last few weeks leading up to the exam is stressful. Cause you're like, oh my gosh, the exam's coming. I got to learn this. Am, am I going to remember this? That's stressful. But as you're going through the beginning concepts and the foundations, you should be having a great time. Uh, but yeah, that's my two cents. So I think I, uh, went through all the, oh no, here's one other one for, uh, from Peter. Peter, thank you for the super chat. Uh, do you have any insights on if CBT nuggets will create a Splunk or elastic stack course for security applications? Uh, no news just yet, but it's interesting. Splunk and elastic stack course. Um, I think I saw Knox talking about Splunk a little bit, so he might be working on something, but as of now, it's not on the grand horizon. The, you know, the way we kind of do courses is, um, we try to help the most people. That's really, that's what I'm about on my YouTube channel. That's what CBT Nuggets is all about. We try to help the most people. And that means going, uh, producing courses that most people are looking for and that we can do the most good for. So things like CCNA, like that's a no brainer. So many people need help with CCNA. So, so many people are going for CCNA. So bam, get that encore, um, you know, uh, MCSA stuff, Microsoft, like we try to do the things that help the most people. And as we finish those off, we'll go for the other stuff. Um, but it's hard now because there's so much new stuff that everyone's looking at now for the Cisco certifications and the new tracks. So it's hard. Um, so, uh, short answer to my long answer here. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it could be uh, one day. All right. Um, let's see. Thanks guys for all the super chats. You guys are awesome. Um, ch chicken, chicken ori. I'm trying to make a word out of that. I don't think it's a word. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, what should I start 2020 and you're new to Cisco, uh, CCNA without a doubt. Um, yeah, yeah, no brainer. Start with your CCNA, um, link below right now. Start with CBT nuggets and go for it. And Jeremy Chara will woo you with his, his entertaining and, and fantastic personality. And, uh, you'll fall in love with networking before long. Keith Barker will continue. And then you'll end up with me where I tell you all the information was useless because the network automation is going to uh, change everything. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, yeah, that that's CCNA. E easy question. Easy. Thank you. Uh, Dominic, thank you for the super chat once more. Um, uh, what do you think about the company? Hello tech. If you heard of the company, I just, um, uh, I was just onboarded and excited to start. I have never heard of hello tech. Let's see. Hello tech. Where is it based out of? Uh, I'm asking that as I'm probably about to answer my own question. Oh, tech home support. Interesting. So it's like a work from home job, huh? Let's see. Uh, you know, I, I should probably just share my screen that, uh, so you guys can see with me, right? So goodbye frustration. Hello tech. So I guess it's like, uh, Oh, it's like, um, tech support for wow. Everything. So, if my grandma needs help with her ring thermostat, uh, she'll call you. Interesting. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So you got simply safe support. So this is like that's that's neat. Computer support, Wi-Fi network. That's um, wow. Now I'm assuming it's work from home. Maybe. Let's see. You become a tech. Uh, on demand. Blah blah blah. Get paid weekly. Set your own schedule. Oh, set your own schedule. Be your own boss. Okay, it's kind of like a freelancer thing. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. Well, that's exciting. I, you know, I don't know much about it. Maybe I'll apply for it and just do it for a little bit and see what it's like. Cause that's, that'd be a cool way to get experience. Cause I know that's, um, that's a frustrating thing for a lot of people. It's trying to get that first amount of experience to, uh, become awesome and get into everything. 
and I get back to my questions here. But congrats on the new job. I mean, like I I know it's it's probably like a, a kind of a new thing for you, but uh, that's that's awesome. Let's see, uh, Network Guy TV. Thank you for the uh, super chat once more. Uh, I'm starting for the, like crazy for the MP Enterprise Core. I'm on chapter 16 out of 29 on the Cisco Official Cert Guide. Uh, thanks for the motivation. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm about to go and skim through the OCG for Enterprise Core. I'll probably schedule the exam here in about a, a week or two, just because I'm familiar with all that stuff already. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a big book, man. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, they're cramming a lot like, it, because it's not only the the CCMP um, requirement for an exam, but it's also the prerequisite for the CCIE. So it's it's got to be it's got to be hard and powerful and and ridiculous. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, as your as your Roman said, hey Chuck, uh, just registered for with CBT this week. Congrats, you're gonna love it. Uh, uh, for CCNA revised syllabus, what do you recommend me to refer for uh, more knowledge? Um, I mean, I think wow, the C- CBC Nuggets, our course right now is fire. Like seriously, like a built-in labs and everything. It's it's amazing. So um, that combined with a good book is always great. Um, I recommend. You know, I'm kind of torn between the OCG, which is um, Wendell Odom's, and then uh, Todd Lamley's, which our good friend, uh, the packet thrower, Mr. Don, he uh, he wrote some of that book as well. So it's it's a it's a great book. Uh, so either of those will be fantastic. But yeah, I, I always say get a great book because there's some things in a video, and this is just how it is. But the video won't cover every single minute detail that you might need to know. So a book is great for that. Videos are for reinforcing, for teaching, helping you learn those new hard concepts that are kind of difficult and then kind of like passive learning and then you know taking you deeper and keeping you interested. Whereas books are more for like the facts and figures, things you have to memorize, things you're making note cards out of. So uh, approach it like that. And then of course labbing, but we got labs at CBT Nuggets, so yeah. Okay, Justin's got a hard question. Justin, what are you doing to me? Uh, thank you for the super chat. He says, when will CBT Nuggets, I'm playing with the USB thing, by the way. I'm going to put that down. Uh, when will CBT Nuggets release the CCMP Enterprise and the concentrations? Um, we are currently working on those. And the short answer is we don't know. <laughs> we are producing them right now. We are uh, all working on them. It's super fun to create. And um, I know for sure we're going to have Encore out first. So that'll be the first guy out there. Bam. Uh, probably the most popular one there will be. And then afterwards, we'll be working on NRC and an auto. And uh, what else? Uh, we'll be doing the security core score. Uh, what else is there? I, fr- I, I know we're going to do as many as we can, but as far as what's first, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those things where there's so many certifications that have been released. We have to kind of like, okay, what's the like, what's the most the, the the lowest hanging fruit right now we have to go for uh the, the most biggest bang for our time and buck and stuff so um we're gonna try and release all of them uh but that's the pipe dream right like that's that's, that's a lot of work uh unknown 1862 said chuck do you know some good lecturer for python course online Udemy, for instance. Well, I, of course, have to recommend CBT. Uh, ben Finkel does a fantastic job on his Python course. I went through it a long time ago, actually, and uh, he's great. Um, as far as uh, I've been thinking about, actually, let me know what you guys think. So I, I am going to produce some uh, beginner Linux stuff on my channel. What I've also been thinking about is producing some beginner Python stuff on my channel. Python stuff that is kind of for everyone. Python stuff that you can pair with uh, network automation. The, enough Python to take with you from CCNA network automation to DevNet Associate network automation. So I've been thinking about that. Let me know what you think if you want me to do that. Uh, network Guy TV, thank you for the super chat. It's a lot of material for sure. I had to take a mental break over the weekend. Have you ever got exhausted from studying for these certs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh my goodness, so many times. I. Uh, I, I kind of talked about some of the things I do in my overwhelm video, but uh, what you did was smart. Just taking a break because uh, if you try to just brute force it, just try to go through all the things, it's you're, you're going to kill yourself. And you're you're going to end up hating the process. You have to love the process. You have to. Um, you have to be like. It's it's hard to say this because I know some people struggle with this, but you almost have to be like when you're at work, you might want to be just a little bit excited to get home and study, or maybe you're at work and you're like. Man, I wish I could study right now. I know for me, when I was when I when I was in a, of a right mind, of a good mind about studying, when I was happy and excited, uh, I had a problem because I studied too much. Um, 
I would honestly, and I feel I feel bad for this in, in retrospect, but I would take my my routing like I was studying for CCMP route, CCMP switch. I would take those large books uh, with me to like family functions, and I'd be sitting at the table while the family is like all hanging out. I'd be over there like reading, taking notes, and and, and getting ready for labs. Like I, I felt bad for that, but when that's a good state of mind to be in, where you are just you you, you feel like you want to study all the time because it's so much fun, uh, but when you hit burnout like that, when you just get like mind melt, and you're like I can't do one more thing stop just stop get a step back um do something else yeah it happens to me all the time especially like like my job now and it's kind of a weird thing but like my job is kind of like uh studying my job is to study all the time now from both uh, just things i want to learn to things i am producing for cbt nuggets and both youtube too like it's it's a lot so that's i i employ that method all the time i just have to walk away and do something else uh one thing I always tell people, like the best thing ever, is the Pomodoro method. It keeps you balanced. It keeps you from doing too much at one time. Um, so I know for me, like back in the day, I would be sitting there labbing, labbing, studying, labbing, labbing for like four to five hours straight without getting up. Um, this is like on the weekends, by the way. Um, and that that would kill me. That would kill me. I'd be done. With the Pomodoro method, you make sure your, your, your uh, studying sessions are focused, but they're short and they're balanced. 30 minutes, you do not do anything else but... Uh, configure that OSPF interface, 30 minutes, bam, 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 bam. Then you walk away for five minutes and do something else. Just do something else. Go, go hug your kid, go play a game of checkers. Or I, I, what I do a lot actually is, uh, I will leave and go jump on the trampoline with my kids. It's great. I get to, you know, bounce them around and my heart rate goes up. I forget about whatever I was studying. I get back to my desk and all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go here. Well, like let's refueled. So that, that's my advice. Uh, Robert Russell, oh, where'd you go? Thank you for the super chat once more. Um, if someone is in their role of, uh, I, I guess a combined role of LAN, uh, wireless LAN in, in, uh, in PBX, which is collaboration and stuff, phones, uh, wireless phones, cameras, uh, uh, mobile device management, MDM, where would you specialize? Woo, that's like, I, oh man, that's a good question, great question. I'm gonna sip some more coffee here. Actually, it's surprising, I need some water too. I'm talking a lot. I've hit this so many times. I've been in roles where um, it's, it's such a blessing to be in a role like that where you have so many areas of responsibility, uh, but it's also a curse because you can't really, you don't have the luxury of specializing in one thing like digging deep uh, and you have to choose. So for me, I, I was in a situation where I was, you know, dealing with routing and switching heavily. I was dealing with collaboration heavily. Um, I was also dealing with Windows servers heavily and VMware, and I could have picked any of those things to specialize in. I could have really just hunkered down and focused. Um, so what I did is I just chose the rarest skill. That's what I did. I looked at the team around me and I looked at everyone on my team and I was like, who is, um, who doesn't want to do this one thing and, and who's not very skilled in this? I can fill in that gap and, and become more valuable. I also looked at the jobs around me. Um, so spoiler alert, I chose collaboration to specialize in just because no one on my team liked it <laughs> no one on my team was going to learn it. So I learned it and it made me crazy, crazy valuable, valuable to where like, if I said I was going to leave the company and I went somewhere else, they would immediately counter my offer and, and, and ask me to stay that, that, cause it made me that valuable. Um, it also made me valuable to where I was getting offers all the time to go somewhere else. And I was turning down people left and right. And I'm exaggerating, but it was a lot. Um, so yeah, uh, look at the job market to kind of see where you can narrow down. And not just the job market and the whole, look at your specific area. Um, yeah, like MDM, that's a, that's a huge thing. I, I've, my last company I officially worked at had a whole team devoted to just MDM. One guy specialized in MDM. Um, of course, collaboration, wireless. My brother does wireless now. Um, he's actually switching soon. We're gonna make a video about that. He, um, AWS, but that, that'll be later, that'll be later. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult when you're in a role where you can't really specialize. Like you have to be the jack of all trades, but, um, that's how I would choose. I can't tell you what the best one to pick is. It's, it's up to what you're interested in, uh, what's going to make you more rare and valuable to your company and what's going to make you more valuable to other prospectors, other prospects, not prospectors. <laughs> um, Dimitri. Thank you for the super chat, sir. Uh, this is the guy responsible for the DevNet associate that I have now. I uh, took the challenge like a champ, fought like a lion and won. Congrats, Chuck. Uh, DevNet 500. You know, actually, I don't know if I'm DevNet 500. I don't know if I am. Uh, I, I haven't received my DevNet badge yet, and I haven't received an email yet. So um, I hope I got it. So it's, I, I put a tweet out like saying that, you know, 
the first five, if you guys don't know what that is, it's, it's the first 500 people who receive a DevNet associate in any track. So associate level, professional level, and whatever else they have. The first 500 people, they become like the special DevNet 500 club, whatever. Uh, but it's kind of weird because, you know, the exams went live uh, February 24th, and who's up and ready to go for it first? Australia. Uh, America, we're still asleep, you know? So it's like uh, time zone bias. So I, I hope I got it. I did it as soon as I could. But thank you, Dimitri, for uh, the super chat and encouraging me. It really helps out a lot. Um, super chat from Jeannie Houdini. I like that. I'm currently going through your AZ-103 course. Oh, fantastic. Uh, cloud. Cloud, man. Woo! Cloud is so, like, DevNet, cloud. CCNA, cloud. Um, cl everything's looking up in the cloud now. Seriously. Uh, now, I exaggerate. There will always be a need to have stuff on-prem uh, for some companies. But cloud is where it's going. So the AZ-103 is such a fun, oh my gosh. I, I'm gonna be honest, to this day, to this day, the AZ-103 is my favorite certification exam. That's Microsoft Azure, the cloud stuff, and uh, had so much fun on that exam. Um, so much hands-on, so much labbing. You're actually using the portal, their real portal, while you're taking the test, crazy. Um, so thank you, Jeannie, for the super chat. I hope you're having a good time. If you have any questions, let me know. I had a great time making that course. Um, goodness gracious, I'm getting tired. Uh, JP, thank you for the super chat. If you have a question, let me know. Okay, I think I am about to fizzle out. Um, guys, thank you so much for being awesome, being you. Thank you for Sir Apocalypse and everything that's happened. Uh, thank you for subscribing and, 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 and encouraging me. Like, this is so cool. We have, we have the coolest community. I love this. Uh, if you want to dig deep into our community, get more involved, I do have a Discord, with which has over 7,000 people in it right now, and just people willing to help out and do some crazy stuff. It's so fun. Uh, so go join that. Link below and link in the chat somewhere. I have my bot posting. And, uh, yeah, more videos coming, more of these live streams, and um, I so appreciate you guys. Seriously, uh, this is so cool. So DevNet all the way. <laughs> That's about it. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.